Well, welcome along, everybody, to another Monday night Sonar Masterclass. It's uh, it's Monday the 2nd of August, first Monday of the month. That, of course, is when we have our Sonar Masterclass. So great to have you all here. You can see there's a few people here already. Thank you for coming along. I'm going to bring our guest today, uh, David Leonard, into the picture. So, David, welcome along to a Sonar Masterclass, mate. Oh, I'm going to hey, Greg. How you going? Thanks for having me. Yeah, my pleasure, mate. Great to have you here. Mate, you're up on the Whit Sundays at the moment. A lot of people know you as the uh, solo angler who's based in Noosa or Tawanton and does lots of stuff in that part of the world, but you're a bit further north at the moment. Yeah, mate. I tend to travel overseas this time of year, but it's not happening this year, so I decided to go on a different adventure, and I've always wanted to come uh, up to the Whit Sundays. I, I came here about 12 years ago for a few days with a friend and his boat and I loved it. It was always one of those places I wanted to come back and explore. So uh, I kind of had a few months where I thought, um, you know, I'll just hitch up the boat, come up here, find a place to stay and, um, yeah, do some fishing and some filming out amongst the islands and on the reef. Yeah, life's tough, mate. I guess someone's got to do it, though. Now, yeah, look, guys, <laughs> We've got. I wish it was me, but you know that's all right. You, you feel, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely getting some uh, a lot of feedback from my friends. That's uh, <laughs> yeah, a bit of envy there. Now, guys, yeah. we've got about thirty odd people in the room at the moment. We want to make sure that you can hear us, okay? So, if you can hear us, get into the chat box um, beneath the video there. Type something in. Let us know where you're coming from. Let us know you can hear the audio. All right. We've got a bunch of screenshots and things we're going to work through as the. Uh, as the night progresses, some screenshots of uh, Dave's sonar as he goes out fishing around the uh, the East Coast for various different species. I'm going to talk through some of those and share a few photos. I'm not seeing any chat come through yet, so there is a bit of a delay. It's about a 10-second delay, guys, 10 seconds from when we speak to when you hear us, unfortunately, which is normal for Facebook. But um, anyway, we will we'll plug on. I can see that there's definitely people there tuning in. Um, we'll, we'll wait for some feedback to come through. So, Dave... You're on the with, here. We go. We've got Daryl coming from Port Stevens. Thank you, mate. <laughs> Thank Thanks you for Port letting Stevens. us know. I'm getting a little bit worried there for a second. Doug Reed, excellent. Thank you, Doug. We've got uh, we've we've made contact. Shane from Newcastle, great stuff. All right, now Dave, you're on the Sundays. Yes. What are you fishing for there, mate? What are you targeting? Well, mate, I tend to do a lot of bait fishing and some lure fishing in Noosa. So I thought I, I want to come up here to concentrate or focus more on the surface fishing and the jigging. So, Ooh. you know, stick baits, popping, uh, jigging and soft plastics. And i got to say, oh, it's been, I've been here six weeks so far and the first four weeks was pretty tough because um, it was pretty windy, so I was only getting out once a week. And it's, it's pretty daunting out there. Like, it's a <laughs> massive area. The islands just look amazing. There's so much good ground. And the fishing was really tough. It took me a while. Ooh. You know, I'm not – I'm kind of – I'm sure if I, if I if I just went and sat around the islands and threw out some pillies, I'd get a few trout and whatever, but I'm chasing those big guys, the big GTs, yeah, yeah. big Spanish, you know, the flats fishing, those, you know, the rasps, the, the, the reds, the uh, the nannies, all, all the stuff that I, you know, uh, either don't catch or catch a different way when I'm in Noosa. So yeah, yeah, yep. it's been really challenging. And, you know, I'm finding my way. I've been getting some really good advice from a couple of, uh, very skillful locals over the last few weeks. One of them invited me out last week, and it was a, you know, a fantastic session. Got a couple of bucket fish, bucketless fish, and um, yeah, it's it's getting there. You know, hmm. the, the momentum is growing. It, it's nice to know that even gun anglers like yourself, mate, when they go to new ground, there's still a learning curve. You know, it's yeah, I mean, even, things, yeah, when I moved from Brisbane after 15 years to Noosa, like, I, you know, I had to learn how to fish Noosa. Yeah, and I'm definitely learning all over again, mate. So, like, right. I'm, I'm a novice up here. <laughs> yeah, excellent. All right, and speaking of novices, I, I might just say from the outset tonight, I don't know, Dave, I think we're probably, um, compared to previous weeks, we're probably not going to focus so much on technical stuff. And, guys, feel free to fire us technical questions. But when you start shouting, you know, makes and models and serial numbers and things at us, we may not have all the answers for you tonight, but we will find somebody who can help you. So feel free to fire the questions through. I think we're going to focus more on the fishing, what comes up on the screen and how to interpret that. Am I right in saying that? Yes. Yeah, cool. Yeah, well, Tell I me. mean, look, I, I'm not – I don't have a real technical approach when it comes to using a sounder. I just, uh, you know, I just – I do the basics really well. 
Yep, excellent, excellent. And that's what we want. We want the basics. We want to be able to get that down first, start catching fish, and then we can do the fancy stuff later and learn all the all the technical stuff later. So, mate, shall we start by putting a screenshot up? Sure, yeah. Let, let's get the first one up on the screen. All right. You want to talk us through what we're looking at? Yeah, so basically what this is is this is me going to look for – uh, kingfish off Noosa. So what you can see there is, you know, I've basically got a fair idea of where the fish are going to be, and I've gone, I've gone to a spot where they are at a certain time of the year, and I'm sounding around, and then I'm looking for schools of bait, and I'm looking for activity around that bait, and I'm looking for bigger fish hanging around those schools. And as mm. you can see there, it's a pretty clear kind of description of a big bait school. You can see that big kind of triangular bait school on the, uh, it's on my left-hand side. I'm not sure if, it's, if that's yeah. what people are seeing. Um, and then you'll see that, you know, long, red, thick, not arch, but line. Right there, behind, yep. And that is typically, you know, a predator fish feeding on a bait school. There's some other stuff going on there. Like there's more bait on the bottom. There's bait to the right. But that, that's a typical display of what I would, you know, look for when chasing a lot of different species, and that's a predator hunting bait. Yep. And so, you know, when I see that on my sounder while I'm just, you know, just idling around or very slowly, one or two knots in this case, then I will, you know, spot lock directly on top of that with my um, electric motor and you know, and deploy a bait to exactly the depth where I see that fish. Okay, okay. Now, what for the beginners, mate, what have we got up here? This is all just noise and clutter? Hey, that, that that can be a number of things. I don't think it's the top. The top bit, there's a bit of noise and clutter in the water because obviously oh, in there, yep. you, know, you always get a bit of stuff. But I reckon hmm. what that is there is some, uh, some, some bait getting like either, you know, smashed up by the kings and floating up out of the bait school. So I would say that it's probably some bits and pieces. There's a bit of a kill going on there. Yep. <laughs> so that typically would be, you know, just, yeah, bits of fish, um, you know, leftovers. Yeah. Uh, just floating up. Pl clouds of scales and little parts. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I, I, yeah. I, I, you know, I can't be 100% sure of that, but that's generally what I would think it would be. So let's have a look at the next slide because that I think shows, doesn't it, what's on the what was on that particular. Yeah, and that's, that's one of the kings. I mean, obviously during... Yeah. You know, once I um, spot lock on that spot, there were pretty continuous, you know, schools of bait. I was on a big school of bait, basically, and then kings were coming through. And, mm. you know, I, I I missed the first hookup. Um, I got done, basically, you know, by a big king that just drove me into the bottom. I didn't go hard enough on it. So uh, as sometimes happens, you know, you're not ready for it. And... Um, so I was using live bait um, for this particular, on this particular day. Um, so, you know, obviously tighten the drag a little bit, put another bait out, lifted it a little bit higher off the bottom so I had a little bit, uh, a couple more extra metres to turn the fish's head. And, um, you know, on the second go, that's the result there. Mm. So just playing the percentages there, doing all those little 1% things, keeping it a little bit off the bottom but still in the in the strike zones, so you've just got that extra 50 centimetres or so of headway. And obviously yeah. you know, if, if, if the fish is coming up from underneath and it's heading in the right direction, you want to keep it heading that way. Well, that's um, right. I mean, I, look, I, I, went, you know, I went harder on that, on that second fish. You know, the first yeah. one I kind of, you know, it just wasn't quite prepared, I guess. Uh, you know, you know, sometimes you don't know how hard they're going to go. I didn't go hard enough, so I just tightened the drag a few more notches and, um, you know, got stuck in him a bit harder and got him off the bottom. And, you know, I mean, this guy did probably three three pretty hard runs and he would have been close to the bottom. But, um, yep. you know, as most people know when they go for kings, you know, you've got to wear them out a bit when you're in that shallow water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they do like to wake us up, mate. If we've forgotten to just, you know, crank the drag up that extra couple of nips, like, they're going to remind us. So, Yeah, they definitely can teach you a lesson if you're not ready for them. <laughs> there was some pretty big guys around that day. A mate of mine the day before had caught a 30-kilo one. Wow. Uh, and that's the reason. I, I was out mackerel fishing the day before and, I, you know, got some Spanish and I saw him at the ramp and he had a king and I, I was like, oh, okay, a few kings around, right? I'm going to go chase kings tomorrow. And that's the other thing I, I tend to like to do is, 
I, I will go out chasing a specific species, you know, and mm. I was uh, went home, re-rigged the gear, you know, two two rods and reels ready and rigged um, for this particular species. And so, you know, I'm not, then I'm not mucking around on the boat once I actually find them, I'm ready to go. Yep, yep, cool. All right, let's move on to the next slide. And guys, feel free if you've got questions to fire through about, you know, any any of the stuff we're talking about or more generally about fishing the Sunshine Coast right up to the Whit Sundays, feel free to fire the questions through. So what have we got here, Dave? Mate, that is uh, fishing a bit wider off Noosa. I'm out on the um, kind of middle reef. And that is a school of snapper feeding on a bait school. So this is the bait up here, yes? That's the bait. And those and snapper down kind here. Of squiggly lines in the middle of the screen, directly under the bait Those school. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's snapper. So what happened in this particular case is um, there's a video that I put up on YouTube a couple of years ago, I think it is now, where I had a, I had like a three-way three -way hookup on the boat. And that's pretty much what was going on under the boat at the time. So there was there was also a couple of like small amber jacks as well, but predominantly it was snapper, and they were taking jigs, plastics, and um, and baits basically. Yeah, yeah. And of course, here you can see also, you know, that looks to me like there's fish here pushing into the side of the bait school. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. They, that kind of sharp they, edge. They could have been, you know, they could have been small kings, small ambos and snapper, all feeding mm -hmm. on that school that was coming through at the time. Yep, yep. Now, do you find when you're snapper fishing that your bigger fish are up here underneath the, the bait and as you go further down, the smaller snapper down deeper? Is that what you find? Um, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, look, it depends on the area I'm fishing, but generally, mm. yeah, the bigger snapper will be uh, up a little bit higher. But having said that, I, I've caught bigger ones on the bottom as well. So, yeah. but <laughs> you know, I, I would say a greater percentage of the bigger ones I definitely catch higher up the water column they tend to have a bit of a hierarchy um hmm. but look like i said i know a lot of guys who, who catch you know five six seven kilo eight kilo ones on the bottom um I, I tend to get them up higher especially when i'm fishing with soft plastics or floating baits and those bigger ones definitely have a um you know they'll definitely come up higher if i'm using lighter gear yeah yeah and I have seen snapper, you know, in circumstances like that, where the, you're in 80, 90 metres of water and they're 10 or 15 metres below the surface if the bait are up there, they'll come right up. Absolutely. So, and, and, look, yeah. there's a few times um, it's a really important thing with the sounder is when I've been fishing out in that depth of sort of 40 to 60 metres, I can see the snapper schools on the bottom. It's a shame I don't have a screenshot, but it kind of looks like if you look in the bottom right-hand corner of that screen, right, I'll often see snapper kind of just down there, you know, smooching on the bottom mm. and they won't be biting, they won't be taking baits or plastics. But then what happens as the tide starts to either turn or increase, um, they start coming off the bottom and I start to see them up a little bit higher, like just under that 40 metre mark there, you can see those guys coming up a bit higher. Yep. And that tends to tell me that the fish are getting more active and mm. usually they'll start to take um, you know, what's presented to them, baits or yeah. plastics. So, you know, you can find a school of snapper and it's on the center and, and, and they just won't bite. They're sitting on the bottom, you know, digesting, resting, whatever, sleeping. Um, and then they come up the water column and then that usually tells me that they're ready to feed. Yeah, yep. And that happens with a lot of species too, just quietly. I've, I've observed the same thing with brim. I've had similar things with, you know, jewfish and, and bass and all sorts of species. They will sit on the bottom you know that they're not particularly active when they're just clinging to the bottom, not doing much. And as soon as they start to come up off, and just recently talking to Jace Wilhelm as well, he was saying the same thing with the bait. If the bait are right down the bottom, they're feeling pretty comfy and secure. When they start moving up the water column, they've got something underneath them that are pushing them up. So good yeah. good signs that yeah. something's changed and the fish are starting to come on the chew. So yeah. what was the outcome of that particular episode, mate? Mate, that was the biggest, that was the biggest fish out of that school, hmm. um, which took a soft plastic. And, um, you know, I got a bag of snapper, basically. Hmm. Um, and then I moved and started chasing some other species. Now, with your plastics, mate, you were um, using what kind of, you know, sort of jig heads and things. Talk to us about how to choose the right jig head and weight and hook size and all that kind of stuff for your plastics. Well, I generally fish with a seven-inch soft plastic in the deeper water. Um, hmm. If the bite is really subtle, then I'll go to a smaller plastic, like a five inch or a or a four inch curly tail. 
but I generally fish with a seven inch jerk shad, um, varying, you know, various different brands and colors. Predominantly pink is probably my go-to color, the pink and whites. Um, when I'm fishing for snapper, everyone has their favorites. Um, the jig head size is obviously determined by the current um, or how subtle I want the presentation and the depth. Mm. Okay, so when I'm fishing at a depth of say 40 to 60 meters, I'm generally using from a half ounce up to an ounce of jig head uh, and, and obviously hook size to suit the plastic. Um, generally, is a, 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 for memory, is like a 6.0 or 7.0. Um, size hook, um, wider the gape. I prefer a wider gape hook than a uh, than a narrower gape, just because sometimes those big snapper have got really fat lips, and I've definitely missed hookups before with the not so wider gape hooks. Hmm. Hmm. Um, so that well, yeah, it's always a trade off, isn't it? In that deeper water, it's always a trade off. You know, in shallow water, it's easy. You go as light as you can, you know, and you you right. waft the lure around. In deeper water, you you don't want the thing to sink like a stone, but you also can't wait for it to get all the way to the bottom, especially for the current, so you do need to go a bit heavier. Well, yeah, look, I, I, I do go a little bit heavier, but I also i will cast the lure a long way up current too, like mm, just yeah. so that it's getting to the bottom as it's passing the boat. Yeah. If possible. You're not, you're not spot-locked on this particular spot, or are you spot-locked? Yeah, you're I'm spot-locked. Locked. You're spot-locked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Like when I'm fishing for snapper, 90% of the time in deep water I'm spot-locked. I only yeah. drift when I'm in... Waters under thirty or t- probably around twenty-five meters. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So then I can cast plastics off the front of the boat. But yeah, on this this sort of in the deeper water, I, I definitely spot lock. Excellent. Yeah. Right, and I, I do both with plastics. I'll I'll cast one up current and then I'll feed another one down, uh, and just slowly let it sink off the back of the boat, just in the in the rod holder with the bail arm open, just keeping a, one of my eyes on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very often, very often they'll take one on the drop. Yep. And, and good old Rodney Rodholder, the best fisherman on the boat, uh, <laughs> all you got to do is flick the bail arm and he does the rest. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. All right, mate, I've got a bit of a head, ahead of ourselves here, so um, I've brought up the next screenshot. What have we got? Right, this is a typical example of if I'm in pelagic season and I'm around the bait schools, this is, this is basically, um, you know, a large pelagic cutting through bait school. And mm. this generally means that there's a marlin or a sailfish in the area. Uh, sometimes it can be coves. It's not usually mackerel because the mackerel don't tend to be smashing bait schools as much as the as the big fish in uh, in Nursa. But, um, yeah, like, you know, wahoo, um, sailfish and marlin, uh, that's when I see this on the sounder, uh, and this particular screenshot was taken when I was actually collecting liveys. Mm. So this is at a spot where I go and get um, yakas, as you can see by the waypoint, 158 yakas. Um, so <laughs> I get my live baits there, but I do often get big predators there. And on yeah. this particular day, uh, there just happened to be some beakies around. Oh, and we gone past one though. Yeah, and so that that one there uh, is a is a shot of a, a different day, but that is a marlin sitting behind a bait school. You can just see the bait school on the right there, about to come into the screen. Yep. So that becomes quite a large bait school, and that's that 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 kind of half arch to the to the left. That one there, yeah, that's a that's a marlin, hmm. all black marlin, basically just sitting behind the bait school. Now, how do you know it's a marlin, mate? Um, because that's what I caught. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, look, you don't you don't know what what's on your sounder until you catch it. Then you know, yeah. and, then, and that's just time on the water and, and time with your sounder. And you know, like I didn't know what snapper looked like until I until I saw him on the screen, and then you know, caught one. I went right now. I know what snapper looked like. You know, yeah. and the same with mackerel. The same with all the species. You kind of get to know what looks like what. And I know that a marlin has that kind of shape where it's, it's you know, it's not a, an arch, but it's kind of like a half arch, you know? Mm, mm. A half arch marlin, hey? A half arch marlin, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's now, a half arch fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right. Now, there's two things that jump out at me there, mate. One is 
if we were to go back to the, I'm not going to go back to the previous slide because I'll probably stuff it up and we'll get lost. But if, if we were to go back to the previous slide, you made the point that you go, this is your spot where you go to catch your live baits. You know, there's always yeah. yakkers there. But on this particular day, there were predators going through. And I've just recently done a, an episode about marlin fishing on the Sunshine Coast on the Australian Lure Fishing Podcast. And we talked about exactly that, that people go to the bait grounds and get bait. And then they go way off into the distance to go and catch fish. But where there's bait, quite often there's also fish. And so, yeah, have a bit of a look around the bait grounds. Don't just assume that all that's there is bait. Well, mate, that's – look, at that particular spot on that previous slide, I've caught – all kinds of pelagics there. Look, when, I, when I'm catching liveys, the first thing I do with the first string of liveys I bring up, I put one straight back out. Yeah, yeah. You know, I drop one down and nine times out of ten I catch a fish. Like most of the time I'll catch a big cod there on the bottom, a Maori or a gold spot cod, and I've caught some ginormous ones there yeah. first thing in the morning, just, you know, just by putting one back down. Other times I've caught cobias, I've caught tuna, I've caught uh, – I've even bagged out on Spanish on that spot. Um so it's a you know there's all sorts of fish show up there like you said yeah. there's, there's yeah. just wherever the, wherever the bait are, where the bait is there's usually predators but you know many times I mean I've been to that spot oh God knows how many dozens and dozens and dozens of times um, half the time I would catch yeah a predator and the other half I won't yeah. and then yeah. sometimes there's no sometimes there's no bait there yep <laughs> the other uh, thing that jumps jumps out at me mate there's your marlin way over there there's your bait way over there so for all of those people. And you know who you are when I'm out there having a fish and you go straight through the middle of the bait school trolling your lures. You don't need to troll right through the middle of the bait school. In fact, you better not to because the predators are going to be circling around the outside. And you know, species like marlin and wahoo and spaniards, they're fast-moving fish. They could be hundreds of metres away and you're still in the zone. You, know, you don't have to go right through the bait school. If you do that, you're going to disperse the bait school you yeah. know, and you'll spoil it for everyone. That's the end of the fishing. So, Yeah, look, it's... um. I mean, depends what – obviously depends on what technique you're going to use to catch that fish. Like in, that, in this particular instance, um, I caught that fish, but I didn't catch it, I didn't catch it um, trolling that particular fish. I caught it um, sinking down a live bait. Mm. Yep. You know, and so I, I free-spoiled a livey down into the, into the bait school and caught the mullet. But, but also that same week, um, you know, I caught half a dozen – trolling skirts in the same yep. area yep no you're yeah. quite right yeah if you if you are dropping baits down that's a different matter but it's i guess it's yes you know, sc scooting through there on the main dock yeah um, but, you know, but the thing the is boat. like in this particular area there was a there was quite a large area uh and a lot of bait schools mm. so realistically you just had to keep trolling around doing figure eights and circles and whatever until they switched on and came up and yep. you know it's the law um yep. and i was constantly, constantly going over bait schools and the marlin were at varying lengths but if i i guess it was also if i wasn't if i didn't get hits in the first kind of half an hour hour of trolling i switched to a different technique because it told me that they weren't interested in a bait yeah. on the surface they wanted something fed down to them at a deeper level yeah great point you know the uh, fish are there that it's not right the the like that marlin is sitting down at you know uh a at 25 metres, hmm. you know, he's not up at 10 metres. Yep, yep. And there's the result. That's the fish. That's the fish that was sitting behind that bait school. And on that particular day, there was 20-plus probably boats in that area and they were sitting – I just got away from the boats because I thought, well, there's going to be other bait schools. All these boats are getting in the way of each other. They're all trolling. I'm going to get about 50 – or sorry, probably more, probably 500 metres away from them um, and look for a different bait school, and I'm sure I'll find a marlin. Sure enough, got away from the other boats, put a livey down, and literally it was a few minutes and I had a fish. Yep. You know, <laughs> you can even see just in the – you can see my sounder in the background in that screenshot and you can see a big clump of red on the bottom and that's a big bait school. Yep. Okay. Cool. Let's move on. So that's a picky of pretty much another one of the fish, but, you know, caught on a, on a lure uh, a couple of days later. We just had a, we had a, we had an interesting week where it doesn't, doesn't happen very often, but the, the small blacks, we had a really good push of blue water come right in close in Noosa in um, December, just gone, uh, six months ago. And, um, you know, this, this is the first time I've seen it in 
uh, in the 10 years I've been there. I've seen them obviously out wider in deeper water, but yeah, they came right in close into that 25, 30 metres. And we mm. were looking at 10 minutes from the river mouth and we were, you know, into these fish. So it was just a lucky, lucky week, basically, where they were all yeah. enclosed. Yeah, yeah. Is that a, a line of Lumo beads there on the Lumo sinkers on the... Uh, no, nah, that's there, yeah, coming off the line. Yeah. yeah, yeah oh, yeah. sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, that is. That's Lumo beads. Yeah, I yep. just use Lumo spaces um, hmm. just to get, you know, in, I mean, you can you can put crimps in there if you want. Yep. Um, but sometimes I'll just put some Lumo beads in there as a bit of extra attractant. Yeah, cool. All right. Let's move on. Another screenshot. Right. So this one is a typical Spanish mackerel attack. So you can see multiple fish there uh, in different areas of the screen, a couple on the right, one on the left. You can see bits and pieces of red, which are ones that are obviously just coming into the screen and not. And then you can see that big clump in the middle. And that's there's a big Spanish there, that big red. That, that was guy. Yeah, that one, that's a big guy. Hmm. He's on some bait there. He's having a munch. And there's a couple of, couple of I don't know what they are above him. They could be school mackerel, slightly smaller fish. So this is a typical day where you've got school mackerels, probably some spotties and some Spanish, um, you know. And generally when I see that on the sounder, once again, I'll either spot lock or you don't normally see that if you're trolling. It doesn't, you don't get that much detail. You'll see mm -hmm. that when you're going at a couple of knots or when you're spot locked and that those those fish start coming under the boat. And that's happy days, mate. That's what that is. Yeah, the 0.7 knots there is the uh, speed over the ground. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'm mm -hmm. literally idling. So I've pulled up. I've seen something on the sounder and gone, right, what's this? And I've put it in idle and that's the current just, you know, just pushing me along a little bit and that's what's yep. happening under the boat. And then I'm going to hit spot lock and – Get out the arsenal of uh, of toys and you know catch some fish. And what were you using that day? Metal jigs. Hey, on, on any on, on those days, I'll use fast retrieve jigs like the photo you're seeing now, because hmm. um, I can drop it down to the depth. But at the same time, I will usually have a floating pilchard out the back, which I've cast up current and it's sinking down. Or if there's no current, cast out the back and just weightless going down through the water column. Um, and I'll also have some liveies in the tank. Um, so then that gives me options depending on what they want to feed on. Like mackerel will have, you know, different moods every hour. Um, so, you know, one minute they want something fast and they want something alive and they want something dead. So I just give them everything and, and then figure out what they want. So with your, with your sounder, mate, and, and mackerel, I mean, a lot of people, you know, they, they think about, looking for bait that's going to be where the predatory fish are but what other information can you get can you get information about how the mackerel are behaving or what they might be biting on by interpreting your sounder screen well look if they're on a bait school it's pretty obvious but hmm. most of the time i don't catch them on bait schools i usually hmm. get them just in areas where they show up like they can be um you know this is one thing I'm learning here in in uh, in early in the Witch Sundays. It's completely different where they show up compared to say Noosa. Like, I can't find bait schools here. You know, there's just not mm. anywhere. And that's the first thing I'm looking for, just to see where the activity is, and then I'll look around that area, or I'll look at you know ledges, um, isolated rocks and bombies, that kind of stuff that stick right up, and you know, then you uh, or, or channels where there's faster flowing water. Um, so. But it's very in, in Noosa, it's very different. There's just areas where they show up. There will be bait, but it doesn't necessarily have to be big bait schools, you know. Mm. Um, they just show up in, in any of a dozen places. So it, it's just a matter of going to those areas and kind of just floating around, looking around slowly. Um, sometimes I will troll lures around to find them first and then just hang in that area. You know, that's mm. a good way to find them. You don't often always see them on the sounder, but sometimes you do. You'll see scores of them, either yep. Spanish or spotties, and they will look a bit different. They won't look like the long lines. They'll just look like a, a squiggly kind of group. Well, I am going to try and go back to it. There we go. Yeah, so they can't, when, you, when you're trolling, if, if that in the centre of that screen there, if you took out that big one and, and those other ones on top of it would kind of be typical of what I would see if I was trolling. Mm. You know, because you're moving at speed, you're not going to get the full image on your sounder. Mm. Unless they, unless you swim directly over the school, 
And then sometimes I don't even see them. But if I see that under the boat, I can literally count to 10 and I'll get a hit. Okay. And trolling speed for, for mackerel, mate, what's your? It's for me, five to seven knots. Five to seven, yep. Okay. Yep. And with three deep diving minnows out the back, varying depths, three metres, five metres, seven metres or eight metres. All right. Excellent. Guys, so feel yes. free to, yeah. Sorry. Feel free to ask questions. You're, you're good? You want to keep going or you want to go back? No, 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 that's fine. Yeah. You're good? Okay. All right. So that picture there is you can see that long line, like 45-degree line that's come from the top down and then a straight line. That's me deploying a bait on a downrigger. So that big, thick line is the actual ball of the downrigger, okay? And then you can see kind of squiggly lines above it a little bit, the thin ones, and then the thin one below it. That's my live bait, okay? Now, if your sounder doesn't show that, then you need to refine your sounder so you can see that kind of stuff. So, yeah. you know, you want to see, and then that big fat line, well, that's a good old Spanish mackerel coming off the bottom and coming up to eat my bait. Mm. Now, when you say you want to refine your sounder, you know, for a lot of people, they'd look at this and say, that's too noisy, I'm going to, you know, Turn the drop the gain back down a little, declutter that screen. But you yeah. do that, you're going to lose this detail that you need. Yeah, I mean, it's look obviously it's different on every sounder and every boat, but hmm. because I know that if it's if it's red and orange and thick, then yeah. that's that's all I want to see. The rest I don't really care about. I'm ignoring it. You know what I mean? Hmm. Hmm. So the clutter the clutter doesn't bother me at all as long as I can see what I want to see. Um, you know, if I yeah, if I reduce the gain on that, then I would I would definitely see less. I would still see those big, um, you know, obvious yeah, fish. But, yep. Yeah, but but sometimes I mean the clutter doesn't bother me. I mean you can reduce it if you want, but you know. Yeah, that's right. It's just personal choice. And there's a result. That's the spaniel that came up off the bottom, eh? So that's a spanner that's come up and eaten a live bait. Yep, deployed from a downrigger. Where are the jaws on that? Even Rex Hunt wouldn't kiss that one. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but I mean, you know, these guys will look. Depending on the mood, you know, I probably didn't even need to use a downrigger. I, could, I probably could have just dropped a jig or a, or, a, or a trolling lure or whatever. Um, you know, it's just depends on their mood on the day. Yep, when they're eating, they're eating. That's right. All right. So this is an interesting one. This is. Um, out a little bit wider once again, uh, fishing off of Malula Bar, or from Noosa, but pretty much out from Malula Bar. Um, in May is the time of the year, and this is when the sailfish tend to show up. And what that is there is you can see those two lines going downward from left to right. Yep, that is a live bait being free spooled down under the boat. And that's a sailfish, the other one, that line coming up. That's a sailfish coming out of the bait school to eat the live bait. And that's a pretty awesome thing to see when you see that happening. And that, that's before the bite. And I was fishing with another guy on the boat, really experienced fisherman called Nick Jones from Noosa, pretty gun fisherman. And um, he was teaching me a few things that day. And that was, you know, I was watching the screen. He was free spooling a bait down. That was awesome just to see that fish. So he's free spool and I've got I'm on the controls, like you know, keeping the boat in position. And uh, you know, I turned to Nick and said, mate, I think you're about to get a bite. There's a fish coming out of the bait school, it's coming up and it's gonna hit it. And yep. sure enough, within a few seconds, you know, he had line peeling off the reel. Yeah, yeah. So this down here, the red, that's not the bottom. No, that's bait. That's that's bait. So you've bait. got you 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 not you've got it up off the bottom, you're focusing on that top part of the water column. Yep. So he's yeah, yeah. We've, we've 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 come over this bait school. We've actually jigged some bait out of that school. They were slimy mackerels. Yep. Um, and you know the age old thing, you know, feed them what they want, what they're eating. So and then we're just hooking them up, sending them straight back down into the bait school, and seeing what comes out of it. You know, we've we've obviously before deploying this bait, we've seen them on the bait schools, and um, we've marked fish. So we've gone right. This is the this is the spot for us to put our liveys down. And isn't it amazing, all this bait down here, and they find that one. 
right? The, the it is creating a, it's it's yeah, their their eyesight is amazing in that respect that you know, and they're super lazy. So they're gonna go for whatever the easiest option is, and that's that one that's you know, twenty meters above where they actually were. Yeah. And so he would have been he would have been chewing probably on the bottom on the top of that bait score in the left corner there. Yep. And he's just, you know, He's come through there, probably whacked a few with his bill and then looked up and seen that one coming up, not coming down and going, here's an easy feed. Yeah, yep. And not so easy in the end. And there he is. Hmm. Yeah. So we, we got a couple that day. We missed a, we missed a few, um, but we got a couple to the boat, which was, um, yeah, was great fun. Excellent. And some beautiful things to go with it, mate. Yeah, yeah, some awesome photography there, yeah, mate. Great spots. Underwater GoPro, mate, over the side of the boat, you know. Simple as that, eh? Absolutely. Just make point, it sound so easy. Point and shoot, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And that is the end of the slide deck, mate. So I'm going to bring us up on the screen again, a little bit bigger rather, just have a black screen there. Let's turn that off. There we go. So, folks, that's pretty much it for our presentation today. We're going to just continue to chat for a few more minutes. If you've got questions, though, about any of the species that we've talked about or any of the uh, screenshots that we've shown, if you'd like us to go back and pull one of those screenshots up again, then leave a comment there in the uh, in the chat, and we're happy to uh, happy to answer whatever questions you put up. So, mate, um, let's have a bit more of a talk about your fishing around the Whit Sundays. I so say you're not finding the bait school. So, what's the next move, mate? Well, um, look, I'm finding locations, you know. I mean, mm. I've been out to the reef a couple of times and the first time was pretty quiet. Uh, you know, I probably should have gone a bit further. I, 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 the thing I'm not used to here is the distances you've got to go to get fish. You've mm. got to go a long way here. You know? I mean, I'm used to going off Moosa, look, 10, 15, 20 Ks. Uh, if I do a big day, I'll go 50 Ks, you know. Here, it's not unusual to go 70, 80, 90, 100 kilometres to get to a destination, you know. Mm, yeah. So I realised, uh, look, the islands the islands are tough to fish. Like, the lo obviously, the locals have got their spots and they know, you know, they know where the GTs are or they know where there's a few Spanish or, you know, but they're not there all day, you know. They're there at certain mm. times of the tides. They're, they're on certain, you know, water temperatures, moon cycles, you know, barometric pressure, water clarity. You know, yep. so there's a lot yep. of a lot of variables and a lot of islands and a lot of a lot of area to cover. You know, so I'm slowly narrowing it down to you know a good dozen areas to focus on, um, and I'm just you know I'm getting the odd fish here and there, and you know I did a trip last week out to the reef and did an overnighter, and you know I got a good good selection of fish from GT, Spanish, nanny guys, red throat emperors. Um, a lot of surface strikes, you know, one good fish out of those strikes. So it's improving each time I go. Yep. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's just a learning experience. But I'm using the sound very differently um, than I would in this. You know, I'm looking for different things. I'm looking for pre pressure edges. I'm actually using probably a lot more eyesight. Uh, and then my sounder is kind of secondary, you know, at the okay. moment. Mm. Um, mm. In the shallow waters anyway. But, um, yeah. but when I'm jigging, I'm, I'm using my sounder to look for but I'm also not, not so much looking for big fish. I'm looking for differences in contours on the bottom. And, you know, like, for instance, I'm looking for, like, a bit of green, which is weed, as opposed to uh, the hard bottom, which is red. So, and, you know, um, on the boat I was on last week with the local, you know, I pulled a nine-kilo nine red emperor out of that mm. green weed, you know, and he was, it wasn't on the sounder. I couldn't see the fish, you know. Yep. Yep. Okay. Cool. It's so a quick question that's come through from Craig. He's asking, "What transducer are you using for these shots? A three in one or a one kilowatt?" No, I'm actually just using a Lawrence HDI skimmer, 600 watt transducer off the back of the boat. It's a dual frequency. Um, five, uh, what is it? 50, 5200 megahertz. Yep. It's not actually a very expensive transducer. I think they're like no, three or hundred bucks. It's pretty basic, yeah. but I've got it set up in exactly the right spot where it doesn't get interference from the motor or under the boat, and it reads at clearly at thirty knots. Wow. Yep. That's what you want. Yeah. yeah. So it took me a while to get the right spot. You know, I, I I did some research, and once again, you know, talked to some guys who know what they're doing, 
um, been on a few boats where they're wrong and where they're right and just kind of, you know, copied the ones that were in the right spot and eventually found the exact right angle for the, for the, for the you know, the angle that my boat sits in the water at different speeds and now it reads really well. Mm, yeah, the angle and the depth just below the, the hull as well is, it could be a matter of a centimetre or two can make a big difference to you. Massive yeah, difference. What you get on the screen, so yeah, yeah, good stuff. Thanks for the question there, Craig. So I think we're. um, I'm I'm going to start to wrap it up. We haven't had too many questions tonight, but it has been a great presentation. The people that have uh, been here from the start have stayed till the end. We really appreciate that, guys. Uh, Thank you to everyone that chimed in, let us know that you could hear us okay. Otherwise, I would have been a little bit worried. I have to say that we weren't being heard, so I'm glad glad that we were. Um, So, uh, Dave, let's just wrap up by letting people know a little bit about your website and your videos and where they can find all of that stuff yeah sure mate i mean i've got a few videos that i um sell or films that i sell through my website which is www.soloangler.com um you know there's a there's a really comprehensive noosa film there there's a advanced um macro techniques film and there's a two two location films one from 1770 and one from lucinda up north yeah. different styles and techniques in all the films um you know, there's some merchandise stuff there. But, um, you know, basically, and then if you go to YouTube, there's a lot of free films on the YouTube channel, which is just um, Solo Angler, and the Instagram is solo.angler. Um, there's plenty of stuff coming from the Wit Sundays. I'm just collecting that footage, and uh, it's coming soon. So I have some new stuff and, um, you know, hopefully another film to uh, to pass on to people so they can, you know, see this you know, amazing place. I mean, it's just such a beautiful place. Yeah, yeah. But a question from Stephen about your favourite frequency for downrigging. Uh, I am I'm, I'm usually on uh, 200, on 200 megahertz, yeah, because I'm not fishing in really deep water. So if I was fishing in, you know, like a few hundred metres, I would switch to 50. But, um, yeah, it's usually, usually 200. You, you know. You'd want a pretty heavy downrigger ball to be in 300 metres of water, mate. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So look, I'm, I'm very rarely fishing in more than 80 metres of water. And when I'm down rigging, usually it's not much deeper than 50 metres. Yeah, yep. uh, yeah. Have you changed the, the wire on your down rigger over to heavy braid? Is that your – No, of it's do that? You're just using yeah. the wire? Yeah. The standard Scotty's the, – the wire that comes with the Scotty's down rigger. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Very good. All right, mate. Well, look, I think we might bid you farewell. So um, for those who uh, came along today, don't forget to go and check out soloangler.com. Uh, make sure you go on and follow Dave on social media as well. Make sure you get all his uh, all his information as it comes out. Lots of good stuff there to tune into. So for coming along tonight, Dave, thank you very much for uh, helping Thanks. us out helping us to understand sonar that little bit better. Everybody, enjoy your sonar. If you're not in lockdown, I hope you get out and get a fish over the next week or two. If you are in lockdown, it's the time to be doing a bit of boat maintenance, a bit of tackle maintenance, all that kind of stuff. So you've got all the 1% is done before you hit the water. So thanks, everyone, and good night. Thanks, mate.